Are you like Jay? He's wondering why he's not making any progress in his fitness journey. The scale hasn't budged for weeks and he's not making any progress on any of his lifts. He feels like he's put in all the effort and he's even bought himself a fancy new home gym, but nothing seems to be working. He may as well sit on the sofa and eat some cake. There are several reasons that a lot of fitness newbies fail. You rock up at the gym with some aspirational goals and you've been working really, really hard. But are you actually going to achieve those goals? Are you actually making good progress? Or are you failing? If I could jump back to the start of my fitness journey, there'd be so many things that I would do differently using the knowledge that I've accumulated over the years from various magazines, books, articles, and right here on YouTube. Now, as much as I wasted loads of time in the gym, this video will help you guys who are about to start your own fitness journey not make the same mistakes that I did and also help you be as efficient as possible once you do get started. So, first thing you guys need to know is that 90% of this whole thing comes down to your diet. Instagram, YouTube, and all the magazines out there will show you a million different workouts and fancy gym equipment that you can buy, but that's only a small fraction of what actually gives us progress. I didn't rein in on my diet for months into my journey. I was still out drinking with my mates and eating pizza three times a week. But then each morning, I'd be doing wind sprints in the field opposite my parents' house. I was the very definition of trying to out-train a bad diet. Finding my fitness pal was literally life-changing for me. As soon as I started tracking calories, that's when I saw some of my biggest results. Regardless of your goals, whether you're cutting, bulking, or maintaining, it all comes down to your diet. Next, we move on to supplements. I was an absolute sucker for this. I bought everything thinking it was going to give me the edge. I bought creatine, beta alanine, ZMA, HMB, fat burners, T boosters, BCAAs, EMAs, CLAs, omega 3, 6, 9, L glutamine, Thermo Pure, and to be honest, 90% of it does absolutely nothing except empty your bank account. The supplements that are important, studied and actually work are protein, regardless of whether it's whey, casein or from meat, uh, creatine, fish oils and to be honest, I genuinely do get a better night's sleep if I take ZMA. And while talking about supplements, we also need to take into account pre-workouts. Pre-workouts are great to give you energy and increase your focus on your heavy sessions but due to the heavy caffeine, you can quickly build up a tolerance. So as much as I do use pre-workout, it's only as and when I feel I actually need it. But again, if money is an issue, then a double shot of espresso is just as good. Next, we move on to perfecting the form and avoiding ego lifting. We need to put form above weight. In some of my earliest videos, which were just a compilation from years of lifting on Instagram, I had so many people commenting on my form, and rightly so. Specifically my deadlift, which was absolutely shocking. Can you guess why? Yep, yeah, you've guessed it, ego lifting. Just because I could get 150 kilogram off the floor by any means possible, I thought progressive overload meant that the following week I had to do 155 kilogram, and the following week I had to do 160 kilogram. My form became absolutely shocking. It wasn't until I dialed it back to 80 kilogram and really focused on pushing from the floor and not using my back until the very top of the movement, did I actually see real measurable progress. Same with the bench press. If you go heavy, you stop the movement coming from your chest and you start incorporating your shoulders, which that kind of weight means you're moments away from an injury. Then we move on to compound lifts. When I first started out, I did what was called Doug's four day split over on the Muscle and Strength website. but. I was working out at home and I didn't really have a particularly heavy barbell. So I pretty much substituted all the compound movements for dumbbell isolation exercises. Probably the biggest mistake to date. You can get an amazing physique purely from compound exercises. Literally zero isolation exercises required. At the height of his fame, Arnold Schwarzenegger released what he called the Arnold Golden Six which was the six biggest exercises that gave you bang for your buck. Those were squat, bench press, chin up, shoulder press, barbell curl, and then he did a, a bent knee sit up, but I'd substitute that for crunches. Even today, I do a variation of this on my full body program while I'm cutting weight. 
The old school ways where you have a free range of motion are by far the most effective. But then we have the most important thing to remember as a newbie starting your journey, and that is consistency. So my first dabble into fitness came in my early 20s. Me and my brother lifted four times a week, but not very consistently. Other things would get in the way and the gym was pretty low on our to-do list. As I didn't make much progress, the drive to push quickly died away and I gained a lot of weight. So my latest journey, I've now been working out constantly for around four years. What this means is that everything I've mentioned above needs to be done consistently. You can do it for six months of the year and then take six months off. You'll always end up back to where you started. Consistently lifting and eating the right food over time will guarantee results. And if you really want to maximize your results and give yourself a fighting chance, then you need to watch this next video.